Welcome to the Strong Single and Human podcast, a real look at single parenting, how to navigate the ups and downs of life with kids on your own while keeping sane. We cover all manner of subjects from domestic violence, dealing with childhood trauma, through to fussy eaters and how to help your kids become resilient. I'm your host, Claire Martin. Welcome. This week's guest is a trained coach, the co-host of Life Admin Life Hacks podcast and a co-author of the book Life Admin Hacks. After a diverse and dynamic career in Melbourne, London and New York, she was on the cusp of burnout and partnered with a longtime school friend, also juggling home and work, to find a better way for themselves and other working parents to survive. She now supports individuals and employees to streamline their life admin so they can win back more free time and mental space, save money and nurture household harmony. She is a co-parent of two primary school aged kids who values living authentically and inspiring others to do so too. Hi Mia, how are you? Thanks for joining us on the podcast today. Well, Claire, it's so lovely to be here. Thrilled to have a chat with you. Well, I can't wait because one, I can't wait to hear about your journey and how you got to one, write a book and two, do the podcast because like, like I'm doing the podcast and we all have a backstory. And mm. um, but then also like I want to learn some life hacks because being a single parent, um, wow, well, I'm knackered. And I need to see yeah. some life hacks to make my life easier. <laughs> so, look, first of all, tell us a little bit about your journey because you're a single mum and you've got two kids, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. I separated from the kid's dad a few years ago, so we co-parent and I've got two primary school age kiddos and we do the week on, week off thing. So I know what it's like to have to take on a whole bunch of life admin that you are solely responsible for. There's no one else, you know, the buck stops with you. Um, But then there's also things that I have to share with my co-parent and there's upsides and downsides to that. And I'm sure lots of your listeners can relate depending on what their relationship is like with the co-parent and Well, it depends. I mean, I'm I'm supposed to be co-parenting, but like to tell you the truth, it's all me. So um, like in a way, I think Mm -hmm. not co-parenting. So in my situation, I think it's a little bit easier because it's just me. So at the end of the day, there's not any conveying of messages or, you know, teacher teacher parent interviews where you've got to both sort it out and get to it or whatever. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's just me. So It can be a lot cleaner. Yeah, it can be a little bit. Um, But then there's setting boundaries and various different other things that you've got to do. So I'm going to shut up. Well, sorry, carry on. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So that's that's my situation. And this podcast uh, came out the year before. So I started in 2018. Wow, the year before um, you separated? Yeah. I had a girls weekend. Oh my gosh. A girls weekend with some friends. We went away, all these old school friends, you know, we're drinking the wine, we're eating the cheese, and we're venting about work and kids and partners and life. And the topic of life and admin came up and the fact that it was out of control for all of us, that we felt uh. overwhelmed by it different people carrying the burden of it in the household and, you know, all this paying of bills and decluttering and meal planning and the school communications. I think in the last two years we've all just been drowning in emails from our kids' schools because they come at least every day, it feels like. But then all the, you know, the plans and policies expiring for your gas and your electricity and your mobile, we just felt like we were continually opening up envelopes and trying to pay things or fill in forms. Anyway, at that, at that little girls weekend, we were like, there must be a book. There must be an app. We be. just haven't found <laughs> it. We started Googling and lo and behold, there wasn't anything out there. And so one of the, one of my friends and I, we decided, you know what, you know, I, I have a background in user experience design where you're designing apps and software wow. to, to help people do tasks and do things really, you know, streamlined way. And this friend has a background operations and we're like let's solve this this is a big problem for everybody that we know uh it's worth solving we want our headspace back we want our time back uh and 
yeah, so that's that's how this little project started. And we st- we wanted to always write a book, but we thought let's start with the podcast because that will help us, you know, approach it episode by episode. Well, I was going to say that. <laughs> Basically the chapters and, yeah, do the research, be the guinea pigs, try the things, see what worked, see what didn't, and build a listenership as we went along on our little journey. What made you go for a podcast as opposed to, blog or something like that because like how how long ago was it that you guys so this yeah this is 2018 because 2018 because 2018 podcasts i mean oh, i mean i've listened to podcasts for years right <laughs> but podcasts yeah. are a new entity and also i think and maybe lockdown has helped in the fact that mm. there's a lot more people doing podcasts, but the podcast is now on its on the up, right? It's like anyone Absolutely. and everyone can do these. So uh, hence I'm doing it. But like, so you're talking like, cracky, it would have been four years ago. You yeah. guys made a yeah. decision so to I do that. So I was a that. massive podcast listener back then. I guess working in digital, I was just exposed to all these things, right? So I'd been surrounded by podcasts. I've I knew the potential of them. Like I think that they're amazing, right? Just the access you get to amazing thinkers and all over the world and any topic you could possibly imagine, all the fiction stuff as well. So I've been a big podcast fan for a while. And you know what, Claire? I just thought it would be fun to try something new. that's fair. No, and like to me, I cook dinner at night. So I go pick my son up from school. I come home. He goes and does his little bit of screen time because that's his little Mm -hmm. addiction. Like, you know, it's so bad to say that about a six-year-old. But like he gets half an hour of screen time Mm -hmm. while I'm cooking dinner because let's face it as you know I'm a single parent so you know apart from him sitting there going is it done yet mum I'm hungry I'm hungry (laughs) what have we got for dinner like if I can distract him for half an hour while I do dinner and so while I'm cooking Mm -hmm. I listen to a podcast I go for a walk I listen to a podcast you know Uh, yeah they are a beautiful (sighs) thing to pair with some of those tasks that you don't really feel like doing uh I, I use them when I'm doing laundry, while I'm folding and putting stuff around. I put my earbuds on and I wander around the house listening to podcasts. I do it when I'm gardening. I do it when I'm going for walks. I plug it in when I'm in the car. So, yeah, that's where the podcast came from. But it was always planned to be a book because we thought, you know, you need a one-stop shop. When, you've got your, when you're trying to decide what your will update should be or, you know, you're thinking about, uh, you know, pulling together a budget and the kinds of things you should be considering. It's handy to have it in a book so you can just open up the chapter, scan it, and get on with it. So, yeah, wow. that's how the book came about. And that launched this year. That launched in January. Yay. And it's been quite the and journey. And so, where can people get the book? We might as well cover that off. Like, so the book is all about sure. l- your life hacks, basically. Life hacks, yeah, how to make life sim- hacks. simpler. Um, but where can people get it from? Yep. So you can get it from like Kmart and Target and Big oh W. You should be able to get it at your local bookstore. You can get an audio version. You can get a Kindle version. You can buy it from Amazon or Booktopia in all the places. So everywhere, basically. Basically, <laughs> That's basically awesome. everywhere right now. And look, if anyone wants to know a little bit about yourself and the actual podcast and what you guys do, um, you also have a, wide, a website, don't you? Yeah, you can pop along to lifeadminlifehacks.com or we're on Insta and Facebook at Life Admin Life and, and I have and, to say, I'm just yeah. interviewing you, but you do have a partner in crime, which is your work colleague. Yeah. And sorry, yeah. I haven't jotted down her name. Diana, that's right. <laughs> Diana, Diana. So Diana and I went to high school together. We've known oh each other God. for 30 years. So we've always wanted to do something like this with each other so this has been a really fun thing to do so yeah she's um she's running all our social media and we wrote the book together and yeah we host the podcast together and she's extremely lovely as well because I actually first of all got in contact with her (laughs) um and then um yeah and now I'm speaking to you which is great and and, and so in the book, so she's married and she's got two kids who are a bit older, but every chapter we talk about how Mia did it or how Mia does it and how oh, Diana cool. does it. So you get this lens of, 
all right, in a, in a single parent family, what does this look like? How does it work? And in a family where there's two parents, you know, how could you approach this thing and share? So I, I, it's one of my favourite things of the book because you don't often see that, right? You don't even get that lens of, okay, it's good and well if you've got, you know, the nuclear family situation. Yeah. But half of us aren't in that situation. No, so no. it's good to have that inside of, you know, how I do things. Well, but you, but you are <laughs> right because it's, and, I'm, and I'm, I've got to say, I'm four years into this single parenting malarkey and it is a journey in itself. Uh, I don't know if yeah. you would, um, you know, support me in that. But mm. like, and for the first year is horrendous. It's like a, a like you go, how the hell am I going to do this? Like, it's juggling everything, and you just it's unsurmountable the anxiety you feel that pressure you feel and then you're going through all of the things that I you know because you're a single parent am I affecting my Mm -hmm. child mentally and all of those other things that you worry about and I have a really awesome empathetic crazy six-year-old boy right who's into all of the normal Mm -hmm. things that all of his other mates are who are in you know that nucleus Mm -hmm. family um and well, who knows what will happen to further down the line. But, you know, at the moment, normal kid, all good. So all those things that I was worried about, don't need to be so worried about. But it is a journey, right? And I feel yeah. as though four years out, I'm actually at a place where, um, you know, I'm at, I'm at a place where I'm okay. Mm, it certainly is a journey. And as you say, you know, there's all that emotion, there's all the guilt. Yes. There's all the grief, the guilt and the grief on top of the fact that you still have to function yeah. and have a household that's that's running, that's that's operating. So, yeah, for me, I think I ended up moving out of the family uh-huh. home and, you know, organising that, finding a place to live, finding furniture, getting it furnished, setting up new credit cards, getting the electricity, the gas and the internet connected, getting contents insurance. It just feels like decision after decision after decision. And I had uh, a lot of to-do lists. Like on my phone, in the book, we talk about the fact that we walk around with these very powerful phones in our pocket and we don't often use them to the best extent. But I had a series of different checklists and to-do lists that well, but I sort of saved you and I just methodically worked my way through and I had time blocked out. So I kind of had the slowest separation on earth. Oh. It was like a, a long time horizon to prepare, like to get things going, which some of my friends tease me about, but it avoided whiplash and it just let me do things methodically. So I had time on a Wednesday where I could go and start doing some of these yeah. tasks and buying all these things that I needed to set up this new life. And did you so, did you do any of that stuff before when you were in the relationship? Were you actually managing like the bills and all of those sort of things? Because I know some people who come out of um come out of the relationship and find themselves in being a single parent, mm. and they've never done any of this before because it's yeah. all been dealt with yeah. by the hubby or whatever, uh, or the yeah. wife, depending on whether they're yeah. um you know single dad yeah. or single mum. And um yeah, it can be a bit daunting. Absolutely. So I was the one in the household who did oh, everything. Oh, which is okay. Like, yeah, it's kind of one of the one of the pain points in the marriage, really. Um, so I, so what I wanted to do was actually set things up so I knew my kid's dad was actually going to be all right. Oh, okay. So in so fact, you did the of, other way. Then you went. I need yeah, to make sure he's okay I, before I yeah, go. Because wow. Yeah. Because I just didn't want it, it to fall in a heap, you know, because it's traumatic for everybody. Um, and so I wanted to make sure there was that transparency and that we all had access to all the accounts and all of the, you know, all the info. So before um, we kind of decided we were going to separate at the start of the year, like in January, which I think is the separation season. It was for um, me I didn't actually as well. Move out. <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah. family lawyer will tell you. January, it's far enough, thanks. <laughs> See ya, Christmas was yeah. bad enough. Oh, God, can't do another year of this. Let's make the call. Oh, um, oh, what was I saying? All right, so we made that decision in January, but I didn't actually move out till like May. And so, which was 
yeah, people have had that experience. There's good and bad in that. It has its own challenges. I know. I did a year like that. So I completely understand where you were. Not with this relationship Mm -hmm. split, but with my son's father. But I have done a year in a relationship with an ex-boyfriend where we lived together for a full year. Mm. And we were both dating as well. So that was a whole that well, was a whole some, mind field dynamics I'm, to deal yeah, with that I will never do again. Yeah. No. So no, yeah. God love him. But yeah. yeah. Um, so during that time, like we went fully paperless and we switched everything to be digital so we could upload things to cloud storage and have access to all of the things. I'm talking, you know, the important documents like the wills and the house loan contract stuff and bills and statements. We set up um, password managers so we both had access to the bank and the credit card and all the accounts. And then we set up a shared digital calendar. So this was just all using Google stuff, like a, a separate family email. Exactly, a, a separate yeah. Google Drive um, and this shared family calendar where we could put all the kids' activities and extracurriculars and appointments and whatnot and both have access to it and see it and and, you know, keep our personal stuff personal and our personal email addresses. So that was something that I got started um, before I actually moved out. And then I did a massive declutter because I wanted to see what we actually had surplus of that I could take with me to the apartment. You know, we've all got so many vases and towels and oh, sheets yeah. and chopsticks and stuff. So it's like, all right, what can I take with me? What do I need to actually buy? One needs fixing up around the house too before I set sail because, you know, home So did you actually, uh, so you owned the house that you guys were living in? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, okay, so hubby stayed in that house. Yeah. And then you moved into an apartment. Yeah, I moved into a rental. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, what I sort of focused on before I actually moved out to set up some of this stuff so we could carry on as best as we could after the the big move out, which is when things feel really different. Life does feel very different after that moment, you know, um, for you and the kids. So, yeah, that's how that went wow, down. Wow. Okay. So that and I and I, it's it's okay being single, as it were, in quotation marks, in the same house with your ex-partner and the kids. And there's sort of some safety in that. But then when you finally do move out, there is that isolation, loneliness, all of that, Mm -hmm. or celebration, I don't know. I mean, you know, but it it is. You're very much, you've come out of that and it is very much like you're both on your own. You both deal with the emotions that you deal with. Um, So then... Moving out to – so you it sounds like you sorted it all out for him. So then moving out and being on your own, like – and and I, I, and I want to bring everything back to the, the podcast and, and what you mm-hmm. went through. Like as a single mum, right, what would you say are your top well, – I've got, I've got top ten here, but maybe top five um, mm. life hacks then. So move mm. out. You're a single mom. Yeah. What have you discovered is like really like essential as a single parent yeah. to um, sort out? That, I think the first one uh, is getting the kids to help because, you know, there's so much to do in a house and they're perfectly capable of contributing in some way. One of the guests we had on the podcast was this um, parenting expert called Michael Gross, and he has this, he talked about, you know, coming up with junior versions of the game for your kids that it's appropriate to their age and stage. So, you know, with AFL, you've got Auskick, with Netball, we've got Net Set Go. It's like this modified version. So if you think about, you know, what, how could the kids help and it's not just sort of housework. So we very much see life admin as different from housework. Housework is traditionally the cleaning, the cooking, the laundry. Life admin is all of that personal and household admin. It's, it's the deciding what's for dinner and actually planning and not the, just the cooking. Or it's, you know, filling out the forms, the bazillion <laughs> forms that come our way. Um, so you're thinking about how kids can help with that. Like you know, instead of you being responsible for every goddamn meal that comes out, can they help suggest and, uh, you know, even if you have a meal plan where you're just picking what's for dinner, 
get the kids to help pick what's for dinner, come up with the ideas. Though I know there's people who even if they if the kids can't read yet, they'll have a list of pictures of the different things and the kids can go this week, let's have this and then, you know, have, have them help. Um, obviously, if you have older kids, getting them not just to help with the thinking of what's for dinner but cooking yeah. for dinner, that all helps. And little things like filling in the forms, having um, if they get their, you know, scholastic book club form, getting them to fill out some of that stuff themselves or having a little r- rhythm of how those things get sort of handled in the household so it's not just your you and your responsibility. And I know for a lot of people whose kids, you know, have screen time and they're on their iPads and they are building civilizations in Minecraft, oh, they are running the lives of multiple sims. I even go they there. can handle a to-do list, you know. They can look at a shared digital calendar and work out how to get themselves to netball practice or, you know, message their friends to find out what uniform thing I need to wear today so my son's got a whole my my son's got a whole farm of dogs yeah and he names them all (laughs) so um yeah it's crazy but and he knows he knows what to feed the dogs what to feed the sheep what to feed the cat so he knows all of that so I yeah I yeah I have to agree and you know what as a single parent I, you know, myself and friends, when we talk about this, often you want to do all this stuff with your kids, for your kids, because you want their lives to be easy because you feel like their lives, you know, there might be a bit of guilt there about the fact that they don't have multiple parents looking after them. Um, And so there can be this instinct, I'll do everything, I'll make their life easy because I just, you know, who doesn't want their kids to just have a happy life? But at the end of the day, one, you yeah. need the help, and two, it's good for them. So Michael Gross's book about this whole topic is called Spoon Fed Generation, oh, wow. and it was really reinforcing to parents that look, uh, one of our jobs as parents is to raise kids who are independent and competent and feel good in their capabilities, and it starts with having this responsibility at home and contributing to the home and feeling like they're you know they're part of the team. So it's actually good for them. It's not a punishment. It's not a cop out. No, I it's look, actually a healthy. I thing. completely agree with you. And with the food thing, um, I, I've got at the moment. I've Kmart do these massive, great big, um, magnetized um, sheets mm-hmm. that actually have all the different food groups on there. Because my oh, my cool. son was having a bit of an issue with. I'm not. I'm I'm off broccoli this week, and I'm not doing cooked carrots and. Um, I'm I'm not going to have this. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. We need to put all of the food groups on your plate. So you need to be picking. Yeah. So that was quite good to actually get him to actually pick a protein, a carb, and then veggies and fruit and all of yeah. that stuff. So that was pretty good. But uh, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, my son is six and he comes in, he takes his shoes off straight away and puts them away. He gets ready mm-hmm. in the morning. So he gets dressed in the morning, which that was a battle for a year or so trying to get him to get himself dressed and he will then put his pajamas and I'm being very English here but he goes and puts his pajamas under his pillar there are some people in the world who think that's a bit weird but like that's Uh, how I was taught I get it yeah I get it so at least they're there on his bed in a way and he will also make his bed which is the the boy's equivalent of making his bed so i.e he pulls his duvet back, but that's it. Like I tuck it in and everything, but yeah. that's okay. That's Fabulous. helping. And I've that's the junior version of the exactly. game. Exactly. I'm not going to yeah, complain. Right I always thank him and say thank you for making your bed. Like when he gets older, I'll be wanting him to tuck it in. But exactly, it's small baby steps. He's now yeah. migrated to putting his cereal bowl in the dishwasher. So yeah, exactly. And things. that's all that stuff. It's like when they get old enough to RSVP for the birthday party yes. themselves. They know how to send a text message or they can go buy the gift themselves or buy it online themselves. All those little things just help. So that would be my first big oh, thing wow, is like yeah. get the kids Get them involved. involved. Get them involved. Uh, second thing, and this is controversial, this is always a controversial <laughs> topic when we talk about it, is outsourcing stuff. Oh, I'm interested in this. Yeah. So, again, it comes back to the idea that you cannot do it. Everything. We can do everything yourself, but it's a pretty fast road to well, burn it would out. Kill you. Yeah, and so outsourcing. Often, people's reaction is, "Oh, don't have the money, indulgent. You know, I don't have all this extra cash to splash around." And with outsourcing, what I challenge people to do is just really think about where their money is going now and where their time is being spent, 
and how that aligns with their values and their priorities in life uh, and making some trade-offs because it's really about trade-offs. It's not, you know, not expecting people to have splash, you know, oodles of surplus cash just lying around that they can suddenly use for buying meal kits or cleaners or whatever. It's thinking, you know what, I don't need an extra pair of shoes or I don't need an extra bit of kit for my shed or I don't need an extra bike or whatever it might be that you might collect or have a lot of kit for. I'd rather use this because I want someone else to make that fancy unicorn mermaid birthday cake because I'm going to screw it up or I'd rather have someone else get on the ladder and clean the gutters because it scares me and it's disgusting or, you know, whatever it might be. And to really think about, and I know we actually interviewed someone who uh, used to outsource a lot of the meal preparation stuff because she was spending a whole day, a weekend, just prepping meals, like bulk cooking chicken and vegetables so she could, um, you know, because time was tight during the rest of the mm. week. And she's, you know, she's like, I've got two days at home with my kid. During the week it's drop-offs and pickups, and it's frantic and I don't want to spend one of those days just in the kitchen. So I'm actually going to pay to outsource some of this or get someone else to do this meal prep or get my meals through a, through a meal kit yeah. service so I can actually hang out with my kid and have fun and have some downtime. So yeah, there's ways to think about outsourcing. It might be a one-off. It might be something that you get regularly help with every week or month. Um, it might be just going when you're through a busy season of life, like a busy little period where you're like, you know what, for the next three months, things are going to get a little cray cray. I need someone else to help me with this, that, and the other. And that's perfectly okay. I give everyone permission listening to go and get some help. Just pay Pay for that help to free you up to spend your time on better I things. agree with you because I'm actually debating about getting a cleaner in at the moment because I'm going to be starting a new job. I've got this podcast that's going. There's a couple of other initiatives that I want to do as well. And I'm sitting there going, well, well, I don't like housework anyway, one. And mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I just think it's pointless. Mm. I don't – well, we can go into that. But – um. <laughs> I like. I have to have my floors clean. I like my floors have to be spotless. But then dusting and stuff like that, waste of time. Yeah. But somebody else wants to do it and they feel great. Absolutely awesome. Sounds like I live in a pigsty, but I don't. I'm really quite not like everything quite yeah. quite in its place. But I'm considering getting a cleaner in because I know for the next three Absolutely. months I'm going to be flat out. And yeah. I just thought oh, for three months, and you know, and maybe it will go longer. Who knows? Well, that's but, it. And these decisions, it's like, okay, they can come in. It doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't even have to be each week. It might be enough that they come every fortnight yeah. and they're doing the kitchens and the bathrooms and the floors. And you're actually, that's good enough. Yeah. So there are ways to and I know some people orchestrate I, these yeah, things. And yeah, and I know some people who do the like deliver deliver the dinner menu, uh, the dinner delivery things. I can't think what they're called, mm. but yeah. The meal that's kits, right, like that's, HelloFresh, yeah. Marley Spoon. That's right. They are lifesavers. But they do, like, my meal they do them three times a week or whatever. Ever. So that means that for yeah. three nights a week, they haven't got to think about anything. They just Absolutely. got to do these. So it's great. They just pull everything out, done. Or they get the kids yeah. to do it, which is like yeah. point one and point two because it's all exactly. in a kit. The menu's it's portion controlled. It's all portioned. The meal kits, anyone over the age of seven yeah. can pretty much make yeah. one of those dinners it's all over in 30 minutes. They're step by step with pictures. I'm a massive fan because I hate yeah. cooking. I should say I hate cooking. I just, I'm not very good at it. And I you hate thinking about yeah. it. You just want somebody I, to I hate thinking yeah. about So I do that. I do that exact thing. I have, I get the meal plan. I get it every second week and I get it for three nights. There you go. And it just covers the nights where I got back from netball practice. I have literally 30 minutes to get food on the table before everyone starts falling over the on the floor with hunger yeah. um yeah just you know save no exactly time. exactly and w- because we're now living in this hybrid world as such um mm. where we don't have to be in the office five days a week you could potentially on the days that you're in the office get the get the meal um, menus delivered and then basically that's it for the days that you're in the office, you haven't got to worry. For the days that you're working from home, you've got yeah. maybe a little bit more time to then, um, you know, you're not travelling yeah. backwards and forwards. So, yeah, completely agree. Okay, number three then. Come on. Number um, three. This is great. <laughs> number three, 
I would go, so the whole, the first part of the book is about laying the foundations. It's about having the right apps and tools set up to make all your life admin easier. Mm. One of the things we talk about is, is in that, in terms of scheduling things for the week is having an hour of power for you to just focus on life admin. And this is a recurring meeting with yourself. It could be in the morning. It could be lunchtime on your lunch break. It could be at night once the kids are asleep where you know you're going to get on top of your life admin tasks. Because what we found is most people don't actually have a dedicated time to do it. They might have these growing to-do lists and these thoughts that are whirring around in their head thinking, oh, my God, when am I going to get onto that? Oh, I can't forget to do this. But they don't actually have time set aside in the week to do it. So pick one, pick a time, pick an hour of power, put on your Udi, pour yourself a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever it is that's going to make you feel good about this, put on some music if that's what you need, and then sit down and just work your way through your to-do lists. And in terms of those to-do lists, we recommend that you have two, that you have one that is called hour of power and it's those chunky life admin tasks like comparing your house and contents insurance plan and deciding if you need to change it or getting started with updating your super or planning a birthday party, whatever it might be. And then you have another to-do list, which is called 10 minute time killers. And they are all those sort of medium sized tasks that often leap out of your inbox because you have to do something um, that, that can stack up if you don't set aside some time to just get into them. Now, some of them you can do in downtime between meetings or if you're waiting to pick up the kid from somewhere or you're kind of watching television and you can knock some things over, but you need that sort of 10-minute time killer list. And the other task, you know, the other sort of category of life admin tasks we call two minutes too easy, which are all the tiny little things that if you just take the Nike attitude and just do it, then they just go yeah. away. But if you if you get the thing in the in the mail and you're like, oh, it's a bill, you can literally take out your phone and use online banking and sort it out then and there. Or you could put it in a pile on the table and you watch that pile grow. Or you get the inbox and you're like, I could deal with that email now or no. And then you just watch that little red number get bigger and bigger. I've got a drawer. I put all so, uh, mine is shredding, yeah. scanning and shredding documents that come through. I have a drawer mm-hmm. and I put them all in the drawer. But like like you say, once a month I go, right, I've got to go through that drawer because if I cause yeah. it'll sit and it will it fester. Is. It's, a, it's like it's, something that's it's a blocker. there and you go, oh, I've really got to do that. At the moment I've got to uh, um, amend net curtains because I've got these net curtains. I've been saying mm-hmm. I'll do it for the ne- last two months, so I have to get it done in the next week actually because yeah. I said I'd get it done this yeah. month but yeah exactly right so yeah so if you have that hour of power then you know and then you can stop worrying about it you can stop thinking when am they going to get to this you know when you're going to get to it you're going to do it in your hour of power it's it does really it, it does really reduce that worry of finding time to do things when you have something that's actually scheduled with yourself and that you can time box those life admin tasks so whenever one of them pops up on your radar you're like is this a two minutes too easy? Do I just do it now? Or do I need to put this on a to-do list? Is it a 10 minute thing? Or do I need, you know, a solid chunk of time? And you write it down, get it out of here. But I've got to say to you though, and I think it's, it's, it's right what you've said about chunking down stuff and time mm. boxing stuff. So I've been mm. meaning to do my front garden for a gazillion years. And I know that it's going to take me like half a day to do it, right? However, I sat there and I went, do you know what? I'll do half an hour every lunchtime, just do a bit. I'll put my alarm on for half an hour. I'll go and do some at lunchtime or whatever. So I'll have dinner and I'll go and do half an hour. And do you know what? Like within a week it's done and you haven't got Mm -hmm. that massive task sitting there that keeps going on for a week and another week. And because you keep putting it off because it's this big, massive elephant of a task yeah. When actually, if you break it down and you go, right, I'm just going to do a bit of it for half an hour and a bit of it for half an yeah. hour. Um, yeah. And I listen up. Well, there's that saying. There's that saying about the elephants, like what's the best way to eat an elephant? One bit of time. time. Exactly. So, and and, that's, and that applies to life admin too because you might have a task on the list that just says do my tax. Oh and my you're like, God. oh, you know, where do you start with that? It's huge. Yeah. But if you have a little step that just says, find all my receipts and then another the other next task is 
scan receipts. And then the third step is, you know, call the accountant or whatever it might be. Then they're doable. Yeah, you know, chunk them down, minutes. chunk them down, and you'll get it done. Mm-hmm. And you'll be surprised. You think this is a mammoth task that you've been putting off for months. You get it done within a week, and you go, "What was my problem?" But yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's tasks I've had on my list in the past that I've thought about longer than it uh-huh. took to do because I've been thinking about it for like a year. Just bloody now. And when I sat down to do it, it's it's all over in 45 minutes yeah. or something, you know. Oh These my bloody God. nets that <laughs> I haven't been doing since I got them probably at Christmas and we're now in, into April and I still haven't um, – just I've just got to cut off like four or five inches off the bottom, but no. So I'm, mm. you're forcing me to do them this week. I'm going to get them done this week. Even if it's a net a day, I will get them done. But, yeah, <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Okay, so So, I mean, you you know, you bring up a good point in terms of every day. You, I think, as single parents, you're really thinking about what is the priority for the day. How am I going to use my time? And other things can bubble to the surface that feel higher priority in the moment. You know, you're reacting to something, uh, but there's something to be said for having some goals or having some of those overarching priorities about. Things are going to take a little bit more effort or longer term, but are going to give you such payoff. You know, they're going to bring you so much joy or make something so much easier. And it's hard sometimes to find the time to get into that headspace to go, you know what? I promised myself I would do this. I'll be so happy when this is done and I am just going to do yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, look, I, yeah. And, and also, I think the one thing that I have to say is don't be so blooming hard on yourself, everyone. Like, oh, yeah. it, you're a single parent. You're being mum and mm-hmm. dad. You know, uh, like in my case, I'm being mum and dad. Um, mm. And like in your case, you're mum and dad when you've got the kids. So it's actually it. it's actually about um, sitting there and going, oh, do you know what? Like Saturday morning, I was had so many things on my list of things to do, and I got delved mm. into a Netflix series. And I went, it's a Saturday morning. I'm not going to beat myself yeah. up. I got loads yeah. done so, the rest of the weekend, but I was like, oh, well. I love that you brought that up. Self-compassion is so important. Yeah. Actually, a podcast I was listening to this morning was talking about that and how it's it's kind of the sign. <laughs> they talked about how it's the sign of a wise person that you can actually recognise your own suffering and when you need to just mm. bring a little you know, alleviate that in some way and bring that self-compassion, knowing what you need and giving it to yourself and not feeling weird about not thinking it's a pity party or that you're being, you know, less than in some way. It's crucial. It's crucial. Well, it's, it's basically giving yourself a break and going, you can't, you can't be the power creature all the time. You will burn out. You will burn out. So yeah. And I, and I often think about the example we're setting for our kids when we yes. are like that. You know, I just happy, happy kids, happy parents. They need happy parents. Happy parents are rested parents who are making some time to have their own fun uh, and and honouring that part of themselves, whether it's having some downtime to watch a show or do some exercise or to catch up with friends, all that stuff that nurtures your well-being. Yeah, making time for that. It's that whole oxygen mask. It is, it is. You no, know, put on your oxygen mask so you can help yeah. others. It's real. It's real. Yeah, because otherwise you just get hit up, you get grumpy, you get tired. Yeah. And then you yeah. start resenting the children as well. Yeah. And so you go, oh, I, is this what my life was all about? Is like, you know, yeah. is everything for you and nothing for me. Well, that's just, yeah. That's, yeah. It feels relentless. I actually had during the pandemic, so I'm here in Melbourne, yeah, you know, we had too. lockdowns yes. and we had the. 262 um, days, I know. It's yeah. dulled in my brain. <laughs> so we had, you know, we'd stick, stick stuck with our week on, week off thing with the kids. So I'd have a week where I was completely by myself, which is one challenge. And then a week where I was me with the kids, which is at home doing home learning, which is. I'm sure there's lots of eye rolling and head nodding going on with your listeners right now. It was was tough. And I actually had little sticky notes stuck around the house (laughs) to remind me that it was okay to take a break and that it was okay to just go off and stare at the iPad and watch a show or go for a walk by myself or whatever it was Um, and reminding myself that they're only little for this period of time and 
that it's, you know, trying to reframe it to feel like it was precious in some way. But all of these things to remind me to bring some self-compassion yeah. to the situation because it was tough. It's tough. And being a single parent, whatever the flavour you are, it's tough. There's just re- such relentlessness and to it. And also I think with lockdown and, and, and homeschooling and all of that stuff here, it was about doing your best like I yeah. god knows mm-hmm. what my son thought of me because like I was like right come on we're doing maths we're doing English we've got set this from school we're going to do it but then also like I had meetings and I was working as yeah. well right and I was doing podcast interviews and stuff like that so I didn't feel guilty if he was watching a movie for an hour and a half because it meant mummy could mm-hmm. catch up and then I would drag him off the tv again and we would do writing or we'd do you know you mm-hmm. just have to Mm-hmm. Muddle through. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, but it is. Oh, yeah. Um, I sort of liked, I liked lockdown and then I didn't. So, yeah, there were elements of it that I quite liked because I, yeah, mm. I quite like my own company. I love, I love the fact that it gave me time with my son and all of those sort of mm. things that I wouldn't get normally because I'd be traveling into the office and various different things like that. But, but there were times where I was like, oh my God. Oh. somebody needs to talk me down from the ledge because I've been on this ledge for too long and I can't get off. Yeah. So, yeah. I think what, what I enjoyed was seeing the different way I handled the 2021 lockdown to the 2020 lockdown. Because the 2020 lockdown, I had like one of those telehealth, like tele-mental health services that you can call oh. or text at any stage. And because I was just crawling up the walls, I found it so stressful. I was working as well. And it just, yeah. it, was, it was very hard. It was really hard. Yeah. But then 2021, when we went back into lockdown, I had it on lock. Like I think I've just learned so many well-being skills and I knew how to look after myself so that I didn't lose it with the kids and I didn't feel overwhelmed and stressed out. And I was like, wow, I've actually grown yeah. as a person. <laughs> Which you don't get to often witness with yourself. But it is. It, really, it's quite funny yeah. how you get into that sort of, yeah, the routine. Although, see, 2020 lockdown for me, my son was hadn't started school, so he was still at daycare. Mm. So it was still – I oh, wasn't homeschooling. Yeah. So that was all great. Yeah. And then 2021 was homeschooling, and I went – what the oh, hell crap. do these teachers do? <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I love these people. Like, they look yeah. after my son all day. How how do they deal with what's two plus two? Six, seven, five. And I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, let's let's take two apples and two – I mean – some of we the, all yeah. had a new appreciation for the teacher's patience. Well, some of the like, skits I was seeing on Facebook and on, like, Insta and stuff where there's, like, these parents trying to homeschool their children and they're, like, asking them all and they're even showing them, like, and I'm just going, yep, that is it because, you know, you're – I just don't I just don't understand what two apples plus two apples, how many apples have you got? And you sit and look at your child and you go, just count them, dude. Just go one, two, three, four. And he just sits there and goes, six? And you go, no, yeah. count them. Like I was just like, okay, mummy needs a break now because it was stressful, yeah. man. I don't know how the teachers do it, but yeah. Yeah, 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 cray, yeah. Cray. No, I know, I know. Yeah, I learned a lot about well-being and uh the things I needed to stay on an even keel Mm. and what I needed to actually put into my calendar so that what goes into the schedule so that it actually happens. And I know day to day, you know, is, am I going for a walk today? Am I going to squeeze in some Pilates? Am I doing some yoga? Am I just going to go and hug a tree? What am am I doing (laughs) today? Am I hiding in the shed? Yes. (laughs) Yeah, no, I know what you mean. (laughs) What is that mean? So, okay, so we've got, we've gone through, right, let's just recap slightly. So we've got, um, oh, what have we got? We've got, um, oh God, look at me. Look, what's what going we start on? With? We started, we started with, I'm going, with the what's kids number helping. one? Kids helping. That's right. The kids, the kids, kids helping. helping. Number two was outsourcing, outsourcing it. Outsourcing it. Number and three is having this schedule, this family schedule where you have your hour of power 
and you've got your to-do lists and you're deciding whether it's an hour of power to-do list or a, a 10 minute time but I think to also, add to your to-do list. I think you've also hit on number four to a certain extent and I'm sure you've got a different number four but also using tools like Google right Google mm. can be shared between you and your ex-partner okay and the kids depending yeah. on what age they are yes. and what access they have so therefore if the kids go oh netball's on Friday they can book it in as a diary booking in Google Calendar so that mum and dad know I've got netball on Friday or I've got this or I'm going to go see Sally and I'm going to have a sleepover or whatever. Yeah. And so yeah. using tools like Google that are free, so you don't have to pay for them, people, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and just having a space that is a family space is That's really it. good, really, really good, I yeah. think. It's neutral territory, right? So, and you basically just putting, I think when we think about putting in those calendar events, whether it's some kind of sport practice or at someone's birthday party, you know, we have this rule that whatever comes into the house during the week when you have the kids, you are responsible for it. So if you have to RSVP to the party, you RSVP and you put it in the calendar and you put all the detail, you put what they're supposed to wear, you put, you know, if you have to pick up or there's a present or whatever it is, you put all the detail in it to set the other parent up for success is essentially helping the kid out at the end of the day because no one wants to be that parent who doesn't know what's going on and they've forgotten something for their kid or they've embarrassed their kid because they forgot to bring X, Y, and Z. So, yes, yeah, having that detail in the calendar that everybody can see and committing to having everyone actually enter the information um, makes, makes it, it's a game changer for families because often, you know, even for people who aren't single, there's a, Often in their family, they'll have no single source of truth about what's actually going on in the week. There might be stuff on a calendar in the fridge and a little bit in your phone and something on a different calendar that's attached to your Outlook or, you know, and you're like, where where do I actually need to be? So it's helpful for you uh, as well as others in your household and if there's other partners that need to or ex-partners or even part or even partners too. though because like you say right if you've got a family mm. calendar then you can have that for your blended family as well because you know oh, um, yeah yeah. It might be that you're taking uh number one son to soccer and your uh, partner who isn't your ex, but your partner is taking, mm. you know, number one daughter to netball or whatever. And so to actually have yeah. that group calendar yeah. tends to be helpful. Yeah. So any other one final life hack, have you got one final one? What would you say would be the one final thing? Cause I think we've given four. Yeah. So what's number five. I, I, this sounds so unglamorous. <laughs> It's a password manager. Oh. Everybody needs a password manager and most people don't have one. We spend so much of our time logging into our kids' schools' yep. websites and their lunch order website and their Netball Connect website and, you know, as well as all of our life admin tasks to make the household run, as well as all the things we need for work. If you don't have a password manager, often all of that stuff is in your head and you're trying to remember, uh, get it out of your head, help with your cybersecurity, but also it's a place where you can upload documents so that you can access them on the go. So it actually provides this incredible convenience for the next time you're somewhere and they're like, oh, we need to see you're working with children check or we need 100 points of ID. You can literally get out your password manager where you've stored all this stuff and just do the thing then and there. I use two just to safeguard mine, rightly or wrongly, but I I actually use because Chrome, if you use Google Chrome, the actual Mm. browser, web browser, it actually has a password memory thing in there. And yeah, so I would recommend that you actually get a paid password manager. I have manager. got a paid one as well. <laughs> yes, yeah. So what so paid one do you disable, use? Disable the Chrome one. I use Keeper. Oh, Dining uses LastPass. I use LastPass, yeah. Password is also a great one. They're probably the top three that regularly get reviewed really well. But your browser is... Um, it doesn't have the same multi-factor authentication as a paid password one. And the thing is, it doesn't follow you around necessarily on your different devices. So it depends what oh, you got it depends, set up. Yeah, it depends yeah. if you've got Chrome on there and stuff like that. If you've got Chrome on all your devices, then you're okay. And it does actually have a additional password. But, like, 
I have two. So I have LastPass and I yeah. also and I pay for that. And LastPass also, if you're concerned about it being it's got a mm. passcode and various different other security. But if you're also concerned about it on there, it does, and I think some of the other ones do as well, it provides you with a dongle. So you, you can get a dongle, which is an encrypted dongle, if you're concerned about having it as a add-on on your mm. browser that you then log into. You can then have an encrypted dongle as well. And the only reason I know this is because – one my day job is that I'm I deliver security IT I'm a security yeah. IT project manager <laughs> but I'm also uh, I so I yeah. deliver infrastructure and security and so I sort of a lot of a lot of my techie guys who work with me the credibility um, would be shot if you didn't have the guys manager. <laughs> oh they're the dodgy guys who know all the hacks and all the various mm-hmm. back doors getting in uh, legally obviously, because they help companies to block all those doors. But, um, yeah, no, awesome bunch of guys, and they're the ones who go, oh, you can't use that. And so, yeah. So I agree with you. Um, it's a godsend. It definitely is. And, and it's really about clearing up your headspace. Yes. I think a lot of us walk around with this mental load that we're carrying, and that's one of the big reasons we started the podcast and the book, because – the mental load, this constant brain chatter, this constant monkey mind of trying to remember everything and anticipate everything and think about everything, it's just exhausting, yeah. you know. So and let's anything- face it, we've had kids. I'm 50, so I'm going through perimenopause or whatever it yeah. is. So I can't bloody remember a thing anyway. Yeah. So exactly. Anything that can help just get stuff out of your mind, to yes. clear it up for other things is very helpful. And yeah. the password manager is definitely one of those things. No, I agree. I agree. Look, um, thank you for all of those tips and hints and hacks. If anyone wants to um, find out some more tips, hints and hacks, one, buy your book, two, listen to your podcast because you've got loads on there and there's loads, you have loads of interesting people that you've interviewed that come on board and just talk through various different subjects just like they do on this podcast. So that would be awesome. Um, And your podcast is on all the platforms that mine would be on yep. which is like apple and spotify and all of those various places as well so that's cool um so yeah if people want to get out there and find out more and go and listen to you guys please do yeah please do. come find us we have a we, we have a monthly newsletter Ooh. if you want to actually get nudged each month on t- in terms of keeping some momentum going with getting your life admin under control, you can head to our website at lifeadminlifehacks.com and sign up for that monthly nudge. So if there's anything seasonal that's helpful, like, you know, you're coming up to April, that's when usually all the health insurers put on their campaigns and reductions. So if you're thinking of swapping or if it's coming up to tax time or prepping for school holidays, we'll give you some nudges to help you get yourself optimize and reduce that life admin but otherwise yeah for going by the book and we'll see yeah you on the no, that's awesome that's awesome look Mia thank you so much for coming and joining us I do have one final question for you though the question I ask everyone so people who listen to this podcast regularly will go oh here she goes again but if you could have a superpower what would it be Never to get tired. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, I want that superpower. Yes, please. All right, but never to get tired, oh, i.e. not just, going to bed and being up for 24 hours. Just energy. Oh, just, you okay. know, go to sleep and then wake up and just feel refreshed every oh, day. Every day. Just, you know, not feel like I have to crawl into my bed at the yes. end of the night. That would be great. I get you. I hear you. I definitely hear you. What do other people say? Flying, being invisible? Uh, flying, I just time to well travel. Rested. Who's um, well rested all the time? Yeah, no, well rested. I'm, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you, love. I hear you. Um, yeah, no, stuff like that. The, because, that, because with COVID, during COVID, it was like, you know, they just wanted to be able to get in a, a flick a button and fly somewhere else. Um but yeah, that yeah. we've had loads. I have lots of things I want to do all the time, and I just sometimes I don't know. It's a sign of age, and my fitness levels probably. Sometimes I'm just too tired. Yeah, 
it's going back in time, going forward in time. Oh, I've seen too many sci-fi yeah, movies. Taking so pain away well. from everyone. That was another one oh, which I thought was yes, really good. Well, that's um, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think now. I should write. I'm, I have to write. I'll go through them all. I'll go. Yeah. I'll do a do a. That's a much more altruistic superpower. Can I change my answer? <laughs> No, 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 we don't, we, like, I'm all for world peace, obviously, in this day and age, yeah, we all need like it, right, given. but I would yeah. love your superpower, you've just said, because yes, I definitely, like, coffee is my, um, yeah, keep me awake and give me energy, which is not the best thing, really, because it doesn't do that, but hey hey. <laughs> look, thank you so much for coming on board with us today, I love talking to you, um, look, best of luck with the book. Thank you, and, Claire. It's been um, such fun. And the podcast. And um, yeah, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this podcast and you would like to hear more, please hit subscribe wherever you like to hear podcasts. If you would like to support us further, share this episode with your friends and family. And finally, drop us a review on iTunes, as I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, and ideas. It all helps me to understand and produce awesome content you want to hear just like this. If you want to check out our past episodes, write to us, appear on the podcast, or for links, resources, and show notes, go to our website, www.strongsingleandhuman.com. We are also on all the usual social media platforms, Insta, Facey and Twitter. I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope to see you back here again soon. Be kind to yourself and remember, no one is perfect. We're all just putting one foot in front of the other and doing our best. I'm Claire Martin and you've been listening to the Strong, Single and Human podcast.